Cowboys Training Camp presented by AA Best Bell Bonds. MyBestBellBonds.com. Before the draft, do you guys have a pre-draft? Do you guys go through a draft, a process, and just in case things happen? Oh, yes. So mm -hmm. how often do you do that, and, and I guess how does it play out? Does it, does it always play out the way you guys plan, or always something different? It's, it's always something different, and we try and create that because it's like you've got to – react to things the way that they happen you might be targeted in on this player now that player's gone what do you do you're gonna you know stand there and go oh, throw your hands up there's another player <laughs> so we do uh, the joneses uh, expect us to do and we, we we sit in the room and we do mock drafts it's not just for the fans we go through okay we go through all these different scenarios okay what will we do here if mm -hmm. the phone rings if philly calls and wants to trade next year's one for this spot here is it worth it where do we go what do we do so you prepare for all those things and you think you're prepared but still on draft yeah, day it, something yeah, comes yeah. up and you you know but 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 it, you're better prepared than being unprepared at all so what you're saying it's nothing like that movie <laughs> There's nothing like, draft nothing day? like that, draft movie, day. That, that draft day movie. <laughs> As we visit with Dallas Cowboys Assistant Director of Player Personnel, Will McClay, here on ESPN San Antonio. This year's first-round draft pick, Byron Jones, corner out of UConn. A lot of people initially were like, man, he was at UConn. Is he going to be able to make that transition to the NFL coming out of a smaller school and a football program like UConn? What did you see in Byron that made you take him in the first round and the first couple of days of practice? Is he, is he living up in pads to what you were expecting oh yeah football players come from everywhere you know and, and if you're good at what you do do they have the skill set to compete at the nfl level then you dig into the character of the guy he's a phenomenal character he goes to the combine and tests off the chart mm -hmm. and i'm never going to chase numbers on te testing off of the chart because there's guys that are great athletes great athletes are in the olympics uh, but football players have to be reactionary athletes. Something's going to happen quick, and you've got to be able to use that athletic ability that way. Um, so, you know, we think, you know, you see all the explosion, you see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now he comes out here, and you see him. He's a serious minded, very, very intelligent guy that takes stuff from the board to the field. And then he's a competitor. He's a competitor. So he's, he's going to try and do his best to use those physical talents he has to be better and to be the best he can. And that's the unique part. And he's another guy that everybody was on board with. It's easy when uh -huh. everybody's on board with it because they have all the right things that you're looking for. Staying with that position, you drafted a guy named Mo Claiborne a couple of years ago, and now this is the third year. When you get a guy that's been his third year, has been kind of question mark, how has he been of a player? Could he develop the way we want it? When do you start to realizing that it's not going to be, it's going to be an end for him or making a change there at that position? When does that factor? Is that year three, year four? I think you have to begin to plan for it, and you look at it, and that if you do that, you always stay strong, and you, that's why you know people talk about the draft board. You needed a running back. You should have got a running back. Well, there's other issues. There's 53 yeah, men on the team. Home. There's guys that are their contracts are expiring and everything else. Maybe a guy that you draft in the first round isn't at the time being a first round player. They all have to mature, but you got to continue to try and make your team strong from top to bottom, no matter what the position is. So, so anything could happen. He could go down and. It was the next guy behind him because we were counting on Mo Claiborne and he got hurt, mm -hmm. then the season's over. No, you just – Jason's next man up, all that yeah, stuff. Mentality. If we do the right job of getting the guys and building the team the right way, you're not going to lose a lot of steam when something does happen that inevitably happens in football. And you, you mentioned the running back position. Obviously, a lot of talk about the Cowboys running back position this offseason. DeMarco is now in Philadelphia. You guys do sign McFadden, Joseph Randall. Is it because you guys believe so much in Randall that you didn't want to either A, pay DeMarco what he was asking or go get a bigger named running back? We, we uh, believe in our coaches. You believe in your offensive line. And you believe in the plan, and you think you have guys that fill that void. I, I, I was talking to scouts today. When I was in college, I had a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle, and I put <laughs> Pirelli tires on it. <laughs> well, that didn't make sense. If the engine in the car is good, the tires that you put on, it's all going to function together. Uh, we've got a great offensive line, uh, and those guys are a group, and they're unified, and they know their number one job is to – block for the running back and protect the quarterback mm -hmm. and so if you have people with the skill set and the right mindset that you can you can have success and the coaches are going to call the right plays based on the abilities of our players all right got to ask you best story that you can tell on the radio of you either convincing jerry not to make a pick 
or trying to sell Jerry on a pick. There, there, there's no stories. Oh, come to, on. There's no come stories on. to tell because there's no convincing Jerry Jones of anything <laughs> that he wants to do. And that's why he's the, the great owner that he is. He's going to listen to everybody's input. He's going to take it. Now, sometimes you kind of push one way or the other, but it was uh, Johnny Manziel. We, we had this whole deal and was there and making the Zach Martin pick. Mm -hmm. uh, and I give Steven a lot of credit for taking bullets for, for, for the process and, and, and helping get that message across. Uh, but he listens to everybody. He does everything. And there's times where you go eh, – but he's going to make the right decision based off of the input that he gets from everybody. All right, yeah. but is it hard to tell him no sometimes? Oh, it's hard. Loves somebody? <laughs> oh, it's, you know, uh, what's it like to like, Jerry, you can't do that. You, Mr. Jones, do not do that. You have to diplomatically point out the good and the bad, and he's going to make that's the decision. Good. But if you're convicted in your point, he's going to listen to you, and that's one of the greatest. People don't, don't understand, understand that. People don't understand it. They think that Jerry wants to do this and that. Well, you know what? He pays you to do your job because he respects your information. you got to find the right way and the right time to put it to him, and be have stones enough to argue to have conviction about your point, but he's going to feel that, listen to it, mm -hmm. and do it, uh, you know, based on that stuff and taking it all in. Will McClay, I know you're a busy man. We do appreciate you Thank spending you some time with us this afternoon. Thanks.